You know, I almost can't imagine it being any better. Almost. Hi there, my name is Kevin and I make honest, unsponsored, and to the point narrated video tours about hotels and flights all over the world. This is my 93rd video, and today we've got an exceptional Q-Suites flight from Philadelphia to Doha. I hope you'll join me for the ride. And welcome to beautiful Philadelphia. Terminal A at the airport to be exact. If you'd like to know more details about the exact fare that I paid, as well as the next five videos in queue, please feel free to check out the description below. Check-in today was easy, with just one flight being checked in at this time, with three or four agents devoted to the business class line. After the agent checked in the family in front of me's 300 or so bags, it was my turn. So, super long story short, I'm flying to Singapore. My original second flight was cancelled, and when I was reassigned to this new flight, I had no ability to select a seat. After a few calls to Qatar, I was able to get an aisle-side center seat, which at least meant that I wouldn't have to deal with the horror of rubbing elbows with someone in the center honeymoon seats. The flight was, naturally, full. My last chance to get a window seat was here and now, and she did it. It was not just a quick click of the button by the check-in agent either. She took care of it though, and she won me over. Sorry, that, that was supposed to be short. Anyway, today's flight wasn't originally supposed to happen, but frankly, if I talked about all of the flights and hotels that weren't originally planned to happen in the past year, I'd probably need to start a new channel. By the way, welcome to the channel if you're new here. So, just like 16 months ago, I'd never edited a video in my life, and now here I am doing this full time. So of course, you know how much I would appreciate you giving this video a thumbs up and for subscribing to check out three new videos each week. I truly do believe that I'm just the guy that's roaming around making content that you want to watch. So I'm always all ears about suggestions to make my content better. Except of course you telling me not to ever mention my Patreon which I just launched, link in the description below. A massive and genuine thanks for all that you do. As you may have noticed, I ended up in the Centurion Lounge instead of the Admiral's Club, since the only one available was a schlep away in Terminal C. For Centurion lounges, it's it's not that I'm not a fan. I'm just not head over heels for them like a lot of people are. That said, at least there was a decent selection at the bar. As for the food, it was all tasty, but it was just odd to me that the primary, actually the only protein dish, was fish. And if you're here, do everything in your power to snag one of these cozy nooks, because it can get really crowded in here. Before we head up to the gate, let's check out today's stats. We'd be taking off initially to the west, before heading up to 34,000 feet for our 12-hour flight to Doha, and we'd be landing around 11 minutes early. Time to head to the gate and board. Today's aircraft is a Boeing 777-300ER that was originally delivered to Qatar new in 2009. In the past, it's worn both the FC Barcelona livery, as well as the World Cup livery. Today though, it's just in basic silver and maroon. Change back perhaps when they installed the Q-Suites? In the past 10 years or so, I've had around 70 long-haul flights, probably around 50 of them in premium cabins. I say this simply to stress what I'm about to say. This was the best cabin crew I've ever had, easily. From the moment that I stepped on board, until the moment that I stepped off, I was taken care of. I know that sounds like a very basic thing to say, but it's the way in which it was done that makes all the difference. I'll get into details about it shortly. First off, let's take a closer look at the seats on board. All of the Q-Suite equipped 777s in Qatar's fleet have 42 business class seats. I wish I could say that all of the odd-numbered window seats are rear-facing and closer to the window, but that's not the case. So depending on your aircraft, make sure you look at the seat maps closely. In terms of seats to avoid, really not a big thing, but one Alpha and Kilo have ever so slightly a little bit less room due to the curvature of the aircraft, but it's really not that big of a problem. When booking, I selected 3 Kilo for myself, a rear-facing true window seat. 
The suites are well known for their center honeymoon seats being very close together, which isn't great if you're sitting next to a stranger. But if you're traveling with a partner, the two beds can easily be turned into a single double bed. As for the seat measurements that I took, it's a very comfortable 21 inches wide and 20 inches deep, providing ample support for long flights, with the suite itself being 40 inches wide at its narrowest. When lying flat, it turns into a 73 inch long bed with a decent amount of foot cubby space and 24 inches of width with the armrest pushed down. My only complaint about Q-Suites is that the seats do not go fully flat. I know it sounds insane, but it's true, and I'll show you later when we take a closer look at the seat. This is not a layout that feels particularly open, but that's kind of the point. Q-Suites emphasize your own personal space, and they do a very good job at it as well. Multiple sets of the center seats are also considered quads, and if you reserve four seats together, you can slide the IFE monitors to the side and essentially create a small room with four seats in it, a very clever trick for families. Here, you can see an example of the window seats that aren't actually against the windows. Note that these seats do have a larger side table and a larger cushion though. The flight attendant brought me a flute of champagne and then surprisingly closed my door, which was a very nice touch. Just under your side table is a newer but not newest generation remote control for your IFE, as well as a universal power outlet, USB type A port, HDMI port, and the mysterious PayWave scanner, which I've never seen actually used on any airline. Next to your seat is the armrest come seat extension come storage cubby, which can raise and lower as well of course, and open up. Inside you'll find your noise cancelling headphones, a bottle of water, and plenty of space to stash just some other stuff. Up over your shoulder is a reading light and coat hook, and just want to point out the materials used. Of course, in this day and age, the majority of materials are plastic or poly or something or other. But here, they just look really beautiful and classy. Pleasantly understated, especially compared to their biggest competitor, Emirates. Overhead vents were thankfully available, and your window side armrest could also raise and lower, though it was a bit of an effort to do it. At your seat, you'll find two pillows, one area where Qatar could improve. The maroon pillow will be slipped into a pillowcase at bedtime, but it still just feels like a throw pillow to me. And then the super small and flimsy pillow, which honestly I think is just more of an Instagram accessory than anything else. Then there are the pajamas. I'm not sure the exact cutoff of flight length for when they are and are not handed out, but I was given a pair on both of my flights, this one and my next eight hour flight. They're a nice quality and, well, frankly, you know you're fancy when your PJs have tissue paper in them. Slippers were a touch nicer and larger than standard issue these days. The blanket is thick and rolled tight enough to do some serious damage should an onboard pillow fight break out. Seriously, as dense as a brick. I love how the blanket is very long, but it could be a bit softer. I'm, I'm thinking about Etihad's blanket, which is probably my favorite out there. Diptyque amenity kits, gift boxes really, were at each seat at boarding, and despite not having a pouch, it has to be one of the nicer kits I've gotten in a while. Note that it seems that these are the kits given from outstations, and on flights originating in Doha, you'll get a proper pouch, which you'll see in my next trip report. COVID safety kits were also at the seats, and here's a better look of the foot cubby. Of course, full paper menus were available, which I'll show you in full during the meal service. Under the table, there was also a storage nook with a well-placed lip to keep things stashed when not needed. The noise-canceling headphones on offer were better than most airlines provide, but still not fantastic. The tray table, super sized and super stable, was great though. If you need to get some work done, I reckon that you'd have more tabletop space available here than in many office cubicles. Asked the captain what was taking so long before going back to my seat to watch the FIFA-filled safety video. Had I watched more than a handful of soccer matches in my life, this probably would not have all been lost on me. Pushback came around a half hour late, but I didn't mind a bit because of the hospitality. I'll admit, by this point, I was already really impressed. It seems there are, let's say, three types of airlines these days. Those willing to do anything to increase shareholder value, those trying but failing to be the best, 
and those trying and succeeding at being the best. Whatever you or I might think of the state of Qatar, it's hard not to acknowledge that this airline is one of the best soft power assets any country on earth could possibly have. All right, time to actually go somewhere. 10 minutes in and we're still on the ground. Philly's airport is to the south of the city center. We'd be taking off to the west before making a U-turn to join our oceanic track. Best sound on earth, coming up next. In no time, we were at cruising altitude and leaving the Jersey Shore behind while we chased the moon. Our route today would take us just a bit south of the Great Circle route to avoid Ukrainian, Syrian, and Israeli airspace. On to the IFE. The safety video mentioned 4,000 entertainment options on offer, and while I didn't count that many, I did count how many movies and TV series there were on offer, which you can see on the screen now. Also, Wi-Fi, 10 bucks for the full flight, no data caps, that's it. Props to Qatar for having one of the most sensical airline Wi-Fi services on earth. To everyone that probably skipped directly to this chapter, welcome to the video. Dinner service, which was my choice, the full menu is a la carte and served whenever you want, started with warm mixed nuts and a glass of Pinot. Feel free to pause the menu to take a closer look. The red prices on the wine pages are sample US prices of the listed wines just to give you an idea of the value. My turbulent candlelit dinner started off with a hearty portion of Maine lobster bisque, which was out of this world good to the very last drop. The acidity level is what made it so good, just enough to offset all of that richness and a very good sign of things to come. Next up were a few of my favorite words. I'm weird, I know, I enjoy turbulence. We had a trio of prawn salad, which was a bit of a disappointment. It was tasty, but it was the same prawn salad delicately placed next to various items to make it seem like it was a trio. For the main, I had the chicken hariyali with vermicelli rice. It's essentially a green curry from either northern India or Pakistan. You can decide on that one. Next up is what has become my favorite course on any long haul flight. A cheese plate with a glass of port. The service concluded with a chocolate and praline crunch cake. And I think that's enough. The moving map was decent, but not the newest generation. Though I did find the Titanic marker a bit strange. And the only thing that really bothers me throughout the flight on the IFE system were the number of ads and PSAs that ran during the moving map. Honestly, I, I could care less about ads in general. But when I'm trying to get rest, I like to keep the moving map on. But I had to turn it off because the screen brightness was constantly changing. The toilets were nicely appointed with more diptyque products, highly recommended the facial mist for long flights. Also a bench is available, and something that when I first saw it made me think gross. In reality, the crew put a fresh seat cover on the seat in between every passenger's use, and also constantly folded the toilet rolls. Let's pretend that we're not over the desert and it's not broad daylight. I just wanted good lighting for the filming of the bed. Just after the meal service, the crew offered to put on either just the seat cover or totally make the bed for you. Everything was comfy and cozy, except for the one and only thing that I truly did not like about the seat. It doesn't lay completely flat. You can see the flat armrest on the side, which would be totally level. 
This, combined with the obtrusive headrest, make it difficult, if not near impossible, for side or stomach sleepers. Back sleepers feel free to disregard all of this. Snack baskets were brought around a few times, a few times that I saw at least. The doors are actually high enough so that you really don't notice the aisle traffic, a big difference from the likes of British Airways. My morning started over northern France. We're going to take a small tour, and while we do, let me talk to you about the service. I've flown six segments on Qatar in the past years. I can say with confidence that all cabin crew are trained to the letter and know how to do their jobs well. Today's crew went much further. I've never felt so taken care of on a flight, and that's what made this flight different. It wasn't about attentiveness or friendliness, which of course was also on point. It was much more a sense of genuine hospitality. The crew serving my aisle, let's say they were exceptionally exceptional, but in general, all of the crew were warm and effortlessly friendly. Airlines in the Middle East employ crew from every corner of the globe. There's no inherent level of cultural hospitality like you'd find, for example, on ANA or Singapore Airlines. But at the same time, how the hell do you train someone to offer such great hospitality on a daily basis with a group of a dozen or two strangers? It, it, it was just perfect. Up next was breakfast service, and it was the best breakfast I think I've ever had in the air. Let's be honest, normal breakfast is not the most exciting meal on an airline, but today's menu was not normal. I ordered two dishes. Breakfast nachos, as they were called, and shrimp and grits. As I suspected and hoped, the breakfast nachos were in fact chilaquiles, which is a popular Mexican breakfast dish of tortillas, usually topped with salsas, eggs, beans, cotija cheese, a few other toppings, and either a red or a green sauce. This hit the spot in so many ways, I don't even know where to start. And how it made its way on a plane from Philly to Doha is beyond me. That came with some pastries, a Greek yogurt parfait, a strawberry basil smoothie, and copious amounts of freshly brewed Americanos. Not to be outdone by Mexico though, the American South had something to say loud and clear with the shrimp and grits served with warm cornbread that were up next. It tasted even better than it looked, and I'll leave it at that. The further we flew, the more surreal the landscapes became. The cabin was prepared for landing as the crew gave out more cold towels and chocolate. By the way, you could always choose hot or cold towels. Our approach brought us over Saudi Arabia before crossing over Dammam and Bahrain before we turned south through what I'm assuming is a mixture of moisture, pollution, and sand? Finally, some turquoise waters came into view before we landed at Qatar's Hamad International Airport. And we were followed in by one of my all-time favorite special liveries, which is worth a double take. Taxiing to the gate didn't take long, and before I knew it, this 12-hour slice of paradise was over. But let's just say, the airport was pretty good too. Let's get into the flip-flop score. Feel free to pause if you'd like to take a closer look. Genuine thank you to anyone that liked this video or subscribed because of it. I really hope to see you again on Wednesday for the first in my 9-part Bali series, at the very new and beautiful Andaz Bali.